Okay, let's get started. Thank you everyone for dialing in um, <clears throat> uh, and taking your time from your busy schedules, right? Um, I'm Sakshi. I'm a customer success manager at Moengage and I'll be the moderator for today's session. So today's topic is how to comply with Google and Yahoo's new sending requirements in 2024. Just to brief about what we're going to talk about today. Last year, Google started requiring that emails send, uh, sent to a Google address must have some form of authentication. And uh, it was also recorded that the number of unauthenticated sorry, yeah, the number of unauthenticated emails uh, dropped by 75% in uh, and that helped declutter users inboxes by a lot, right? Um, so the new guidelines uh, require that brands follow these three key things. One, authenticate their email. Two, uh, enable an easy unsubscrip unsubscription method. And three, ensure that your customers are receiving emails that they opted in for. Right? Keeping email more secure, customer friendly and spam free requires constant collaboration, vigilance and uh, vigilance from the entire email community. Right? Um, and that is why we've gathered today. So let me quickly introduce all the speakers to you. Um, starting with Francis Tan, um, the head of digital marketing at CIMB Philippines. Francis, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Yep, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Francis here. So prior to joining CIMB, I've spent most of my professional career working for a digital marketing agency working on clients in the automotive and financial industries mostly. A uh, couple of years in telco and in my past life as a journalist in different tech blogs. So looking forward to sharing my insights. Thanks for having me here. Thank you, Francis. Next, we have Jessica Natanya. She's the Senior Customer Engagement Specialist at Rupa Rupa Indonesia. Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica from Rupa Rupa. Uh, so a little bit introduction about Rupa Rupa, if you guys haven't know. Uh, so Rupa Rupa is an official e-commerce for some big retail brands here in Indonesia, such as Adware, Funka, Informa, or Enter Kingdom, and many other brands. Uh, now we are currently focusing on home living, furniture, hobbies, and lifestyle products. Nice to meet you all, and hope you enjoy the session. Thank you, Jessica. Next, we have Marvel Lek. Um, she's the Regional Product and Engagement Marketing Manager at Chop. Uh, Mobil, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, yes. hi everybody. Uh, I'm Avel. I have been working at Chop for the past six years uh, from every spectrum of marketing. So yeah, a lot of things to, to talk about. Um, Chop is a dining platform. We operate across seven different markets in Southeast Asia. Uh, we will connect you to your next really great dining experience. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Marvel. Lastly, we have uh, Brad here from who's the director of marketing at Mo Engage. Thanks, Akshi. Hi, everyone. My name is Bharatwaj. You can call me Brad. I head marketing for uh, Mo Engage, specifically Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and now Latin market. I'm super excited to be joining the esteemed panelists today and talking about all things email. I'm passionate about marketing. I love data and uh, yeah, looking forward to this session today. Thank you, Brad. Um, so before we start, if anyone in the audience has any questions, you can post in the Q&A section or in the chat. The panelists will take them up as and when they can, or we'll address them during the end of the panel. Okay. Let's kickstart the panel with Brad telling us more about the new enforced mandates uh, by Google and Yahoo. So Brad, what are some of the mandatory requirements and what are the actual impacts that we can expect? Sure, sure, Sakshi. I, I think uh, the impact, the communication actually was sent last year by Google and other stuff. So I'm sure most of the marketers would have been aware of some of these changes. So before I jump to the answer part of it, I would like to understand from the audience, what are the, some of the things, you know, uh, that they are more concerned about or, you know, things that they would like to know more. So here's a quick poll that uh, we will be launching now. Yep. Okay. While 
audience are responding to this poll, I'll take up the question, right? So essentially between both Yahoo and Google, they are addressing or they want brands to adhere to three or four things, right? One is which you briefly covered in your introduction as well. One is your emails have to be authenticated. So there are standard email protocols that brands have to ad adhere to, right? Such as SPF, which is sender policy framework, a DKIM, which is your domain key identifier mail and DMARC settings, which is your uh, domain based uh, messaging, reporting and conformance, right? So these are standard email protocols that brands have to do. And usually this is taken care by the team when they are setting up their email platform or marketing automation setup uh, and they start communicating, right? So this has to be in place. Number two, making it easier for brands to unsubscribe, right? Say, let's say if your customers feel like you're spamming them, you have to provide an option for them to unsubscribe from this. And the second thing is, basically nobody likes spam, right? We here get ton of emails on a daily basis. So they don't want you to spam your customers. So now they've given a threshold of any brand which is falling uh, or any domain to be precise, which is uh, crossing the threshold of 0.3%, uh, the emails or the domain will be blocked, right? So the impact for brands here is uh, starting February 1st, some of your emails will be blocked if they are non-compliant or non, you know, if you're not adhering to these policies. Number two, by April, majority of your emails will not will go undelivered because these will be blocked by both Yahoo and Google if it is not adhered to. And by June, all your you know emails will go undelivered if you still you know don't comply to these policies. So that's in a nutshell what you have to take care of. Thanks, Brad. So my next question is for you, Francis. So um, email is one of the most important channels for banking industry, right? So what are some of the tips and tricks that CIMB is ado adopting to ensure the compliance with these new uh, standards? Okay, so one thing that I always uh, remind my team uh, that I want to share with everyone here is that digital marketing is only around 20 to 30% what you know right now. And for the most part, it's about learning, adapting, keeping up, and innovating as our industry is also constantly evolving. And what that means for us as marketers is we need to have the agility to always learn and adapt, not just in content and channels, but with compliance as well. And so my challenge is that even if email providers didn't make these things mandatory, it would actually still be in our best interest to make sure that um, our email marketing uh, platforms are as secure and as valid and as authenticated as possible because the truth is platforms don't really set the bar high when it comes to email standards. And my proof of this is when we look at our own inboxes, majority of us will still see a couple of irrelevant, unsolicited, and unwanted emails um, even with these um, standards in place. And so the point that I want to reiterate here is as far as tips go, um, these platform guidelines are not meant to be excuses for us to no longer focus on content, that as long as uh, we comply, we're okay. Uh, it's not, because it's equally important that on top of this, we still focus on providing value to our customers. And of course, it goes without saying that it really pays off to work with big, reputable email or CRM companies that you know, will take care of these things for you. Um, to make sure you're always compliant, but uh, more or less, that's it. Great point, Francis. Um, Jessica, uh, can you give me some insights on why you know keeping track of these changing consumption patterns and preferences is essential um, in light of the new mandate? And you know how are you doing it at Rupa Rupa? Uh, okay, so uh, the new policy that uh, Google and Yahoo is just implemented actually focus on fighting spams and uh, improving user experience in general. So I think uh, the thing that you can do first is uh, monitoring your key metrics in email, such as open rate, click rate, uh, spam rate, and seeing the trend actually. So if you are seeing the trend, you can keep track of the changing consumption pattern of your customer as well. 
But for me, uh, the one thing that is most important is the segmentation. I mean, people are most likely to unsubscribe if they receive email content that is relevant and contextual for them. For example, if I want to buy a furniture, I would love to see some emails about uh, interior inspiration, color trend this year, or furniture furniture deals that uh, I can enjoy. So I think segmentation here play a significant role uh, for the in the in the new policy from Google and Yahoo. A little bit of sharing here in Rupa Rupa. Now we implemented a full segmented audience for our email, and it actually can boost our open rate up to five and six, five until six times higher than before. So I want to highlight like the very important role of segmentation uh, in this new policy. Uh, but after all, uh, I think technology here plays a significant role. Uh, let's let's say that technology plays like a co-pilot uh, in your in your journey. Like it helps you navigate through a storm. Great point. Segmentation is really the key. Uh, going circling back to your earlier point, Francis, um, you mentioned that providing value is is the key to your customers. So, uh, what are some of the customer behavior trends that you have seen that suggest the importance of segmenting at CIMB? Um, uh, highly uh, providing highly personalized experience, and what is it in like banking industry? Okay, so marketing has uh, evolved so much over the years that technology now allows us to treat people not just as numbers or data points, but as actual people. And in terms of customer behavior, uh, what I'm seeing is that expectations and even to some extent entitlement are at the highest that they've ever been. So much so that personalization is now actually becoming more and more expected uh, from different companies. And the example that I want to show here is uh, not in the banking industry, maybe something more relatable to most of us. Um, if Spotify, uh, if their uh, Spotify rap campaign, uh, they only showed uh, the top trending music and the, who the top artists are, it probably wouldn't have gained as much traction as it has, as it has. Uh, because um, even though everyone had like their own preferences, they ended up having their own stories to share. So it's not just about numbers or trends, like on a large scale, it's about a single person's number and trends. And so zooming out a bit, uh, the meta that I'm seeing here is for marketers to stop relying on Google or ChatGPT or marketing blogs to find you know, the next big trend or the best practices, but just go ahead and experiment. There are a lot of things that AI can do better than us. And this is actually one of them. Um, and leveraging on real-time behavioral and transactional data to make marketing decisions instead of purely relying on uh, human decisions is uh, the way I see moving forward. Thank you, Francis. That was a great example to actually put into perspective. Uh, Marvel, while contextual engagement is and through segmentation is a great strategy for your existing user base who are already engaged, um, how about the dormant subscribers? How, what are some ways to engage them? Yeah, I think for dormant subscribers, um, we do have some of our usual like promotional tactics, right? Like featuring the We Miss You campaigns where usually we put in like discount codes or promotions sprinkled in as a way to entice customers to come back. Um, that's one. Uh, I think depending on your brand's tone of voice and personality, plus like the type of users that you engage with, um, you can also kind of weave in humor as a way of reconnecting with customers again. I think messages like, did we do something wrong? Or like, why did you ghost us? Um, in today's world, like customers do kind of like brands who are able to poke fun at themselves and not take things too seriously, where it's not too intense. Um, and I think if that works for your brand and for your business, that is something that uh, you can try out as well. But I think here at Cho, um, we, we usually try to kind of like strip back to our core mission, right? Which is about connecting diners to restaurants and restaurants to diners. And what is dining all about? It really is about 
well, one, what's like trending restaurants or hot and up and coming, but also what are restaurants and dining experiences and memories that give you a lot of nostalgia and that feeling of comfort. Um, I think knowing that those are the motivators, we can then create content around that to hook diners back being a point of contact that shows them that, hey, you know, whether it's this brand new, really hot restaurant that has come up that I'm pretty sure you've heard about, actually it is on choke and you can book it now immediately. Um, or perhaps, you know, your favorite restaurant that you used to always book on choke, um, remind them of it. Perhaps the restaurant has a new promotion or something that has changed to kind of like capture them and tell them like, it's time to revisit and re-experience these great memories that you had. Yeah. And I think, What's really important here in trying to win back a dormant base is that it's not really about your brand or your product anymore because they have fallen off, right? It's not telling them like, oh, you know, here are five different things that you can now do on my new product. No, it's about showing them how you can help them connect with things they are interested in, um, how you can be that bridge or you can make their lives easier. And it all stems from what they are interested in. Yeah, so I think if you talk to them less often, which we 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 kind of do, um, but when we do talk to them, we try to make it count, try to make it such that it's about what they're interested in, remembering great dining experiences or to create new great dining experiences. Um, that helps them connect the dots between that and your brand. Suddenly you're like a little bit more interesting or relevant to their lives right now. Uh, and I think over time, then they'll just keep coming back. Yeah. That's a great pro- point. Humor does go a long way in marketing lately and and this has been a trend. Um cu- coming back to you Jessica, how how can business effectively manage um customer complaints, dissatisfied customers and also email bounce rates in a way that improves the overall customer experience? Uh I think in today's digital era uh, effectively managing customer complaints and bonuses is critical to build a uh, long-term engagement with your user. So I want to use a little bit analogy here. Imagine yourself being a thoughtful party host. If someone doesn't like your party, in this case spam, or if someone doesn't get invited to your party, in this case email bonuses, you need to address it uh, correctly and politely, right? You don't want people to not like in your party or doesn't have a great time at your party. Uh, at this case, uh, you can utilize feedback loops that is provided by most mailbox services to actually help you identify the complaint and to man- and help you to manage a uh, have a clean list cleanliness of email by removing the uh, bonus email as well. Uh, but after all, I think uh, as a business, we need to have a regular direct contact with our customer. Uh, hearing their feedback, why don't they like our email, why are they unsubscribing? Because after all, as a business, we need to uh, listen to customers' feedback in order to improve for the future. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Brad, how now for some of the technical parts of these mandates, right? How do brands ensure that emails are authenticated? And, you know, uh, what are the some resources and quick fixes that can you can suggest? Sure. So, like I said in the beginning, right? So, the authentication setup is usually taken care by the, you know, could be a CRM specialist or an email marketing specialist, or if you're working with a, you know, ESP, they will help you set up the, you know, set this up at the beginning. But for general marketers, if you have questions about, hey, I don't know, you know, how these are in place, here is a quick way I can show you uh, to see this. Can you all see my screen? If yes, just leave a thumbs up or just say yes on the chat. Right. Fantastic. So uh, a simple way to do this, you know, be it a free tool or a marketing automation platform that you use, all you have to do is before you send a campaign or, you know, just a one-time thing, you can set a, send a test email to yourself, right? So I'm using my own account here to show a test email. So I sent a test email to myself. If you come on the right hand side, you will see these three dots, which says more, click on that and come to the option, which says show original, right? The moment you click on that, you will get a detailed page like this with you know bunch of technical stuff. So, so three things that you have to look out for here. One, you will have these SPF domain uh, email identifier message and the DMARC setting. Just see if everything reads pass. If it is passed, then you don't have to worry about it. It's all set up in place. 
uh, if it says neutral or fail then you have to talk to someone either a consultant or your it team or let's say your email service provider to check how we can fix this right that's number one this essentially helps uh, you know I'm, I'm sure all of you would have received email from a nigerian prince asking to invest right so this essentially tells uh, gmail platform that hey you are not spamming them or you are not sending any spoofing or phishing emails right the second thing that you have to look out for is the domain names right if you look at the from address here it's my name at moengage.com which is the domain that which i sent it and if you look at the dkim it says that moengage.com right so both the from and the dkim is the same domain usually what happens is if you are using a free email service provider or if you are using a shared ip right so this would read a brand's name. It could be you know whatever.com. And what happens as a result is if the IP is shared between multiple customers, even if somebody does something because you are using the same IP, you could be penalized for somebody else's mistake, right? So ideally, you have to ensure that the domain is set up. The third thing that you look out for is just scroll down here and see, uh, you know, received from email right if you see this complete the ip address have to be uh, provided or in a in a technical term the complete ip lookup has to be provided if you are using some uh, let's say technology has evolved uh, to a great extent right a lot of people use some kind of phishing technology and other stuff to mask these ip address and they send out emails so what happens as a result is Google will start treating these emails as, okay, this could be a phishing email or this could be, you know, I don't trust the sender and it will start flagging it to your consumers. And when they receive their email on their inbox, it will say that, hey, I don't think, you know, it will show a warning message for them to mark it as spam. And if more number of people start clicking on that, you know, hey, this is a spam and they start complaining against you, you could be penalized, right? Like I said at the beginning, if you fall below the threshold of 0.3% of your emails, then you don't have to worry. But if you cross that threshold, your emails will start getting blocked, right? So to summarize three things, check you are getting passed here, see if the domain names are same, or talk to your email consultant or uh, you know ESP to check if that is set up. And the third thing is received from email carries a full IP lookup. Great, thanks for that, Brad. I think uh, that was quite in depth of the technical side. Um, so coming back to you, Mervil, on your earlier point about, you know, crafting engaging content that captures the essence of your brand, right? Can you share an innovative approach that you use at Job um, for creating email content that um, captivates your subscribers? And um, if there's, um, what would be an AI powered engagement platform? What role would play? Yeah. Um, I think today, like marketing is all about storytelling, right? And using that to also, I guess, showcase how your brand or your product really adds values into the consumer's lives, uh, helping them achieve something. Uh, and I think for the world of dining, which Chop is in, it's really all about like dining experiences. And the challenge to us is how we can bring that feeling and that dining experience in to into our customers world through like an email right like something on just a screen um for us i think number one obviously is like content and we try to make it as personalized as possible um we leverage like user attributes that we pipe into more engage uh to segment our diners based on their interests so some of it can be like your favorite cuisine or your favorite uh, location. And all of this is always based on their past dining experiences, like whether it's their past bookings or browsing behaviors on any of our platforms. And from there, then we can learn that about them and tailor our content to be something that they're already interested in. So an example is like, maybe one segment of diners are very interested in like Japanese cuisine or steak or they always like to dine out at Teluk Aye. Um, we can craft, we usually have like a content bucket, let's say it's like trending tables, right? Where are the trending places to dine out? But because I know you like Japanese cuisine or I know you like to eat steaks, um, the restaurant selection that I give you is based on that. Uh, however, we also still like keep a section that is generic because I think 
one part about a part about dining is yes, I want to eat something that I always like to eat, but I also want to explore and try out new things. Um, so we do pepper in our personal takes on like new and hot eats, like where you should try out. But I think where AI and AI powered engines can really come in uh, is in the personalization bit, right? How can we make that automated? How can we make sure that the model is remaining updated? And I guess that's why we also partner with AI powered or AI powered engagement uh, platforms like Moengage because it helps us break into that next level and next phase to really try out making sure that our content is personalized but on like a big scale because you can't do that for like 20 segments every day by yourself um for us you know at the end dining is such a social thing and how we want to leverage AI or how we've been trying to leverage AI is through personalized recommendations right it's all about the social proof like hey someone who is similar to you um they are now they have been dining at these five restaurants um peppering that together with our ratings and reviews then kind of closes the loop on the social proof this person is similar to you i can tell you how many other people also rated it like a 4.3 stars in ambiance or something like that and i think that helps diners make the decision um and therefore i guess engage and convert a lot more so something that is personal to me and what i like telling me that people similar to me also like something different that i haven't tried yet and telling me what the mass majority feels about these restaurants i guess that's how we kind of try to continuously keep our user base engaged and also use ai to round it off great so while personalized content does take care of um you know um being more contextual to me sending frequency is something that can still be quite tricky um how can uh, businesses find the optimal frequency of how often should they reach out to their subscriber? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's definitely, it is really tricky. There is no one size fits all. There's no science. There's no one platform out there telling you like you can only talk to someone once a day. Um, so for us, uh, we, we make sure that I think it's like one of our main health metrics. Uh, we don't want to spam people. We don't want people to unsubscribe from our comms. Uh, and so I think firstly, giving customers the opportunity to tell you their preferences is one, right? Whether it's like at the point of subscription to your newsletter or somewhere in a profile telling them that, hey, you know, you can tell us the frequency at which you want to hear from us. I think that's one tactic that you can do. Um, but for us also, we do have a lot of different comps that's being sent. We have um, transactional emails when you make a booking, when you complete a booking, uh, if you want to do like a ratings and review. We also send our normal marketing promotional emails as well as um, we have like customer lifecycle journey touch points. So that can get a lot and it is difficult to keep on top of everything and know exactly how many emails is this one person going to get on a, on a single day? So for us, we try to attack this um, with three different steps or three different angles. So one, uh, on Moengage, there is like an in-product frequency cap. So we do use that to ensure that someone doesn't receive like, let's say more than two um, emails in the same day and like definitely like push notifications. You need at least X amount of hours apart. That's one. Um, but also we do things manually where at the beginning of the month, because we have many different segments and we have different strategies as to how we talk to the different segments, we do look through our whole kind of like comms calendar and track okay how many messages how many emails are going out to each segment and we want to make sure that no one segment would receive let's say more than like three emails in a week or like 12 emails across the whole month so we do kind of put that in place to make sure that we're more or less across it um and lastly i think listening to diners or the customers based on their behaviors right just now we were talking about how to re-engage a dormant base but for us the fact that they are dormant um and not engaging with our comps so we have like a segment called dormant unengaged which means they haven't opened any of our emails in the last 90 days 
we take that as like a nod that like, hey, I don't really want to like read all of your emails. So what we do is we look at that segment specifically. We make sure that, okay, let's cut down the number of comps we send them. Uh, so that hopefully, because I talk to you less, when I do talk to you, it's like, oh, it's like a little bit like new and like a breath of fresh air. And then we make sure that the content is like what, what I said, like personalized, exciting, new. Um, and that's kind of the three different ways that we make sure we don't spam everybody all the time. Uh, the way that we monitor, like to see whether our frequency tweeting is correct is we look at our unsubscribe rates. So I think we currently kind of sit at like 0.1%. Um, and that's our regular database health metrics we always keep on top of and make sure there's like no major spikes or increases across the month. And if we see any particular email that has more of an unsubscribe, we'll kind of do a little bit of a deep dive to understand who and why. Yeah. That, sorry. Sounds good that love the uh, idea of taking it from the customer um, and, you know, converting into segmentation to identify frequency. That's quite interesting. Uh, so next one is for you, Francis. Uh, how does A-B testing help? Can you, can you maybe like shed light on or an example how A-B testing led to an interesting insight at CIMB? Uh, sure. So uh, the first uh, key takeaway our team had uh, from A-B testing is not really much of a surprise. It's more of a validation of what we all already know, which is marketing can really be subjective. Um, last year, we ran a campaign wherein we had one material approved by one of the heads and another one approved by another head. And instead of deciding whose idea we'll go for, we ran an A-B test instead. So it's not about ego or power or who gets his or her way. It's just about the numbers. Um, I guess the more surprising part of, for us is that we were expecting huge differences in the results. But there are also cases where in, in an A-B test, the results are almost parity. It, so it might feel like a waste of time, sometimes just a few decimals apart in terms of results. But I hope this doesn't discourage you because it's not always the case. We've also had instances where uh, we thought uh, one material would perform worse, but it actually performed better. There are even instances where I was proven wrong. I wanted a more sophisticated route. And my team wanted to go for the more humorous, casual, gossiping auntie type of material. And guess what? Their material performed better. And that's okay because our job is not to be right. Our job is to deliver results. And so uh, I just want to close this by sharing uh, two ways of A-B testing that I've seen uh, different companies uh, do. So the first way is doing A-B testing as a campaign. So here you run an A-B test, you see what performs better, you make insights and generalizations, you report it to your boss, then you apply it to your future campaigns. That's the first way. The second way requires a bit more effort and commitment, but it's actually the more ideal way, which is making A-B testing an always on part of your marketing process. You don't do it for one campaign, you do it for all campaigns. You don't learn from it once. You continuously refine and redefine your content. What's important is you don't just do it because we are doing it or because everyone else is doing it. You do it because it's part of your strategy. So that's it. Thank you, Francis. So before we move on, uh, Brad, could you, in a quick uh in a quick summarize, uh, highlight um, all the fixes that ensure that the audience steer clear of any email deliverability issues and how to be compliant. Sure. So broadly, you can divide this into two parts. One is the technical aspect of it and the operational or non-technical aspect of it, right? So the technical aspect, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, ensure that your emails are authenticated. You have DKIM set up, you have SPF set up, and you have DMARC setting. In fact, one of the question was about, hey, how do we know what, what do we do if the DMARC is not available, right? So talk to your uh, email service provider and consultant, ensure that these are set in place, right? So that you don't have to worry about the te technicality of it, right? The second thing is decide whether you want to use a shared you know, IP if you're using a free service provider or something, right? 
because like I said, if it's it's a gamble, right? You never know how whether the other party who's using the same IP is adhering to all these protocols and other stuff, which could result in you know your brand getting affected because of this, right? So talk to them. Third thing is there are, you know, email is not new, right? This has been there since the dawn of time. And uh, in fact, the first email was set up as soon as the uh, launch of your ARPANET back in the day. So if you're using legacy systems, if you're using the old days, you know, uh, email marketing solutions or otherwise, do check if these are updated or better, I would encourage you to switch to a platform that, you know, adhere to all these protocols so that you are not penalized as a, a result of it, right? And uh, in the second part of it, which is the non-technical is ensure that, I mean, we had a fantastic panel today and they shared most of these things, right? Uh, send personalized emails, segment your list instead of sending, you know, the same email to everyone, right? Um, ensuring that the emails are only, re only relevant emails are being sent to folks, right? You're not, for whatever reason, you're not sending communication to, you know, by mistake. And there is an anonymous question saying that, hey, uh, how do I know? Is there a way to track if somebody, uh, th track the real spam rates, right? So let me quickly share my screen again. So from, so we use uh, our own emails, uh, you know, channel and we provide we cater to a lot of customers and one of the things that we have uh, you know, tweaked this, if you can see a compliance tab, if you look at the analytics of any email campaign, you can see the accuracy of the compliance, right? So if your emails are being marked as spam, we ensure that it's being tracked properly and then that gets flagged. Again, a lot of email service provide you spam rates or number of unsubscribe rates and other stuff, but what you have to check is if it is free service provider, then probably the accuracy might be a question or uh, you might have a feeling that, hey, I'm sending an email, but it's not landing, right? And a follow-up to that is my transaction emails are not getting delivered, but customers keep complaining about it while they have unsubscribed from all your emails. So while you're providing an option for people to unsubscribe, you unsubscribe them from all the emails, but give follow-up options to it, right? Saying, hey, uh, do you, you want to still want to receive the transaction emails, but not the marketing or the promotional emails, or is there an issue of frequency, right? Yeah, hey, I want to receive the email, but I don't like the frequency. Maybe change, give an option for your customer to change the frequency. It could be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or whatever, right? So ways like this will help you adhere to the new requirements and not just the external factors that are forcing brands to change these things, but more like a general hygiene for you so that you are able to uh, drive more value or more ROI from your own communications, right? That's Back great. Thank you, Brad. Um, okay, that was quite an insightful session to hear from all of you. As we wrap up the panel discussion, um, let's hear from all the panelists um, on their most important piece of advice for email marketing. Uh, just a quick short note. Um, let's start with you, Francis. Okay, sure. So three quick things. Uh, number one, uh, take advantage of the technologies that uh, are available and that you have. Um, number two, the tools may be new, but marketing has always been the same. It's about understanding your customers. Um, when you follow case studies and best practices, you're basing it on the past. Uh, if you're experimenting, you're building your own future. Um, and lastly, if anyone wants to geek out more on email and marketing talk, I would love to connect with you guys on LinkedIn. Thank you, Francis. Uh, how about you, Marvel? Um, yeah, I think, I guess the summary for me is, well, well, one segment your base, um, but not just on like, you know, the activity level on your platform, but also the engagement levels. I think let your content meet them where they're at. So you got to understand where they're at um, and understand them based on like their interests and preferences. 
next your consistency of brand tone of voice like across every touch point I think goes a long way make sure that your customers see and feel the value that your brand or your product adds to their lives and that will in the long run have uh, great benefits and I guess lastly is like just keep experimenting no matter what I think like um just now what Francis was saying right sometimes when you a b test and then it's like literally no difference you're like why did I go through all that but I think you never know when something would really move the needle so just keep trying yep, thank you thanks Marvel. how about you jessica okay so my conclusion is uh, the new policy actually uh, have an objective to enhance uh, user experience in general which ultimately benefit our customer as well so uh, i guess to adapt to this uh, new landscape uh, we as a business need to refine our strategy or in my case, uh, I think that effective segmentation is the key, uh, like Marvel mentioned earlier, uh, because it allows us to optimize our key metrics and also increase our email engagement as well. But uh, above it all, uh, you need to make sure that uh, your emails ensure, uh, you need to ensure your, that your email meet the authentication protocol to prevent your email lands in spam folders. That's all from me. Thank you, Jessica. Um, okay, I think uh, we are slightly short on time, so I will request the panelists to address some questions in the Q&A while we move on to the next section for today. So um, introducing Sid, um, Sid's the Associate Director for Pre-Sales at uh, MoEngage. Uh, he will be walking you through the MoEngage platform, which will, um, now that we've seen how to comply, um, let's take a look at how uh, to implement some of these using MoEngage. So over to you, Sid. Okay. Hi, everyone. It was a wonderful session from all the panelists. And I hope to maintain that the same level of, uh, same level of details in the next few minutes. All right. So just to keep it more, you know, just keep it more interactive, uh, please feel free to post a question in the chat as we guys have doing so far. What I try to do is I'll share my screen and in the next 15, 20 minutes, we'll try and cover a few details around what are the different, you know, what are the different requirements which have been released so far in a bit more detail. Our panelists have addressed it quite well, but we'll just deep dive it a bit more further and just, you know, uh, see how you can comply with those requirements in real time. All right. I hope you guys are able to see my screen right now. Uh, can someone give me a thumbs up? All good? Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's a high level summary of what has, you know, what, what was shared by Gmail and Yahoo in the last few days. Uh, I guess this uh, this requirements were released around somewhere in the October, and if you compare those requirements, right, these requirements are quite similar from both the, both the service providers. Uh, it all targets around how can how can brands or how can marketers ensure the, uh, there is a strong email authentication in place. How can how, you know how can how can you maintain more or how can you give more control to the users so that they're able to unsubscribe from your target list or you know just subscribe to the relevant content which they require and maintain the spam rate throughout the process right but before we talk about uh, why you know before we talk about how can we comply with these requirements let's take a step back and understand why were these requirements you know uh, released for example if you if you look if you summarize the google's requirement they are focusing more around email validation reducing the phishing spam you know that has been increasing the spam in the recent times as well as yahoo does the same thing it's focusing more on the uh, email authenticity and spam control so overall as an avid email user i believe this is a step in the right direction the, these requirements will definitely help marketers brand or anyone out there improve the security improve the overall user experience for the email and you know uh and ensure there's less spam in the email inbox. So I know that, you, that this might sound overwhelming, but we've got, we are more engaged or we've got the right people to help you out to ensure you are compliant with this requirements, right? So now without any further ado, let's just focus on how can 
anyone in the room comply with these requirements, right? And what are the actions or the steps which you need to perform in order to meet those requirements, right? So I've divided them into four different parts and our panelists have touched upon different aspects right now, a few minutes back, but we'll just deep dive a bit more further into that. And we'll take an example of MoEngage dashboard. And if you're using a platform or a marketing automation solution like MoEngage, how would, what are the settings you need to activate? What are the steps you need to take in order to send those email campaigns and be compliant with these requirements, right? So first part, email, enable the stronger email authentication. As Brad briefly touched upon a few minutes back, uh, we'll not get into too much details about what are the authentication techniques like SPF, TKI, MGMark, and so on. But as a marketer, the only one thing, whatever platform you're using, it might be more engaged, it might be any other email service provider, all they need to do is just send out an email via the platform and ensure, you know, you meet those requirements. So just go on the, um, you know, I know that Brad has showed the same thing before, but just to reiterate, all you need to do is just click on the three tile, three icons, click on show original and it would load up a screen like that, this, which would show more details about what is the message ID, what was the email intended to send to, message ID, so on. The most important aspects would be these three protocols. That is SPF, DKIM, and DMAR. All three needs to be passed. So if that has a pass uh, as a remark, you're good to go, you're good to, you know, you'd be, uh, you'd be set with your email authentication process. If, the, if you are uh, if you are already a more engaged existing customer, good news is there are no additional steps which you need to perform. Our email delivery and experts have already addressed this for you, so no steps involved for you. And all the all the other all the other job attendees who have not you know or the, are using other the other other platforms, all they need to do is if these are not passed, they just need to reach out their respective email service providers. All right. So going back to the uh, going back to the slide the slides in the presentation, the first part is ensuring you have all the authentication protocols in place, right? Second step and the most important would be to ensure your domain from which you're sending it, the from sender header, needs to be aligned with your SPF domain or DKIM domain. What does that mean? In simple terms, if you look at the image on the right side, whatever email you're sending out, right? In this case, the email which I have been receiving is received from moengage.co. It needs to be, uh, it needs to be aligned with my DKIM or SPF records, which means that the mail by or signed by needs to be the same, right? So that's one of the important aspects which you need to rectify during your, uh, uh, during your, the phase where you're trying to meet these requirements. And the most important part or the most important element for me in this piece is no more sending from gmail.com. So if you are a marketer or you've experienced some marketing or promotional emails from gmail.com, uh, these are not going to be applicable anymore from Gmail or Yahoo. Well. So, all right. So moving on to the next aspect or next, uh, next uh, requirement is about how can you, how can you provide more easy un unsubscription options, right? Uh, to address this, to address this requirement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch between more engaged dashboard and the slides just to set up the context and help you understand how can you, you know, how can you record the preferences? Because I've seen some questions around uh, if you if you have recorded the preferences around email subscriptions, how are they going to be stored? How can you, you know, how can you feed them into the CRM platform like more engage and how can you activate them? Right, but let's understand the requirement first. What does the requirement specify? Number one, uh, brands or marketers should enable one click and subscribe. Bo and both the providers, Yahoo and Gmail, has mandated RFC 8058. Right, what is RFC 8058? A simple terms in the header of your email, you'll have an unsubscribe button. That's it. So, starting February this month, any email which is being sent out or I guess somewhere around Q1 this year, any email which is gonna be sent out should comply with RFC 058, right? And if you use unsubscribes from the, those emails, you, you should honor that unsubscription within two days, right? That is, the, that is the SLA to honor those unsubscriptions. And the last part is 
giving the control back to the user. Where you can create preferences, you can create subscription categories, where user can select multiple categories or email streams. And depending upon the preferences, they can receive just relevant content, right? And I, let's, let's try and understand how you can set this up into the more engaged dashboard, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a simple user profile first. So in your CRM system like Mo Engage, so with Mo Engage, you as a or the user who is subscribed or feed into Mo Engage, it's gonna look something like this. The user profile is divided in two different parts, and this user profile is agnostic to your any brand and can be hyper personalized depending upon your uh, depending upon your requirement. So we'll not get into the custom event attributes like customize the user profile and so on. We'll just focus on two different important aspects of the user profile. Number one, the email type as a category, right? So more engage automatically records. So for example, this user was created into the more engage dashboard and it will record all the important BUC flags at the user level. So if you're sending out an email to this user and it bounces or the user unsubscribes or marks it as a spam, these flags will turn out to be true automatically. So as a marketer, as a brand, you don't need to, you don't need to reinvest efforts on updating that list, your list is going to be uh, your managed automatically and you'll have always have the cleanest list possible, right? That's a very important takeaway I would like to take, uh, you know. The second aspect which I would like to focus on is creating the subscription categories. So what are the subscription categories, you ask, right? So I'm sure all of, uh, all of us in the call would, don't want users to unsubscribe right away. So rather than asking them to unsubscribe from a, an entire email, obviously we'll provide that option for sure, right? So there would be an option to pro, you know, unsubscribe users from all the different categories. You can also create different categories like promotions, newsletters, transactional recommendations, and so on. So user has that flexibility to, to pick and choose what different emails they're gonna receive, right? And all these preferences are gonna be stored at a user level. So as a user, if I just choose to receive only recommendation email, those flags will be turned out to be true on my user profile. Else I can just unsubscribe from all the email content, right? And how can you create those subscription categories? More Engage offers that flexibility. So if you just go to settings, email and so on, right? More Engage offers that flexibility to integrate with your existing subscription categories. So we can integrate with the existing subscription management tool, whatever categories you've created, whatever un unsubscription management tool, you know, page you've created, we can integrate that into More Engage. Or you can start setting up your own categories over here. So you can create categories like newsletter, uh, welcome email, critical announcements, and so on. So customers can pick and choose different categories or just unsubscribe from all of them. Right, so that's how I think, that's how the second important aspect is. Just to summarize, number one, any email campaign created on Mo Engage dashboard has an unsubscribe link. At the top, at the bottom, you can define the placement. We are, uh, you know, it should honor the unsubscription within two days. We at Mo Engage honor, you know, these information is updated in real time. And we are giving the, you know, as a marketer, we can give the control back to the user where they can pick and choose what are different categories they would like to get subscribed to. Moving on to the third important aspect is, uh, you know, uh, the requirements state that you should control the spam rate. And the spam rate needs to be in the threshold of 0 0.30. Uh, uh, you know, as, as Brad showcased you a few minutes back, any email created onto the more engaged dashboard will have its own analytics page or any or CRM for that matter, right? But as a marketer, I believe we should not target for 0 0.30. So we should we should focus on 0 0.1 spam rate because that is something that is something a very good target for your for your IP reputation. If it's 0 0.20, that is something you should be concerned about. And if it's 0 0.30, it should be calamity. Trust me. So the ideal target, the ideal recommendation for anyone on this room would be to go ahead and target the spam rate of 0 0.10. Right? How can you achieve that with uh, CRM platforms like MoEngage or your existing email service providers? Number one aspect would be whenever you're switching to a new vendor or a new CRM tool, maintain a high IP reputation. So whenever you're onboarding a new tool, whenever you're moving to a new 
uh, your email service provider, ensuring your IP reputation is maintained at a high level. There are a lot of tools out there using which you'll be able to understand, like Google Postmaster, like what's the IP reputation and so on. But the important aspect or the important cog in the wheel would be during the onboarding process. So there is something called, as most of you guys have, might be aware, it's something called as IP warm-up process. So during the onboarding process, you need to ensure you're ramping up your resources or the email sending volume in a, in a timely fashion, in a, in a very personalized manner, very up. And, do, and always target your clean list during the IP warm process because whatever IP reputation you hold at the start of the email list, it's gonna, it's gonna go long the way, right? So these are the requirements, but apart from this, I think one of the question, uh, one of the question in the chat box was around how, what are the preventive actions we can take in order to ensure the spam rates does not reach at a certain threshold, right? So number one, as, as mandate requires, you need to connect your Google Postmaster tools, right, with your domain, get it verified, you'll be able to, you know, review all the details over there. But as a proactive measure, you should definitely leverage tools like, or deliverability tools like inbox preview, spam checker, right, best time to send and so on. So let's take a few minutes and understand how does it look like in the tool like Moving Age, right? So if it, if it just, uh, if you just look at one of the sample email analytics, right, which Brad showcased a few minutes back, any email campaign which is created into more engage would have details around how much emails were sent, how many email clicks, uh, what were the conversion rates, and so on, right? The important aspect would be to look at the complaints, and this should be way beyond 0 0.10, which is there, right, uh, which Brad already highlighted. The, the other important aspect on the email delivery funnel is the small delivery stats which you see on your screen. With your CRM tool, you should be able to automatically exclude all the users who have complained, who have marked it as unsubscribed, who have marked it out, or you know, all the emails have bounced. So a delivery funnel should segregate all the users and just target users who are reachable via clean list. So for example, with Mo Engage, we are targeting all the users with say target list is around 70,000, right? After removing all the users who are unsubscribed, the final list comes down around 63,000 because there are 7,000 odd users where they have bounced, unsubscribed, or complained. We're also removing all the duplicate emails. So there might be a user with same email address or multiple contacts with the same email address. So we are removing all the duplicate content. And there's something called as frequency capping. In Mo Engage, you can define, create a frequency around what is the time frame you would like to send out an email for, right? Uh, in a day, how many emails you would like to send? What would be the duration between two different email campaigns? So if user falls under that frequency capping as a bucket, we'll remove those users and then the email will be sent. So that is an important aspect. As a CRM tool, we'll need to highlight and that gives more control to the marketers. The second aspect would be on to have those, you know, uh, those email delivery related tools in place, right? So if I just, this is one of the sample email creation platforms on the more engaged dashboard, these are different channels we have, like email push, you can create an omni-channel flow, or you can, uh, you know, you can target users with inbound or outbound channels, but let's focus on email as a channel for now. If you're creating any email campaign, all you need to do is just click on preview. So all the deliverability tools would pop up right in front of you and just click on the inbox preview as an option and run the test. Once that uh, once the test results are provided, it will give you a great visualization around how would this email be rendered into a different web clients? How would this email would be rendered into the desktop clients or web clients, right? This would be a great proactive measure for any marketer in the room to ensure your emails are not, are, are rendered properly into different devices. Right, a great perspective over here. Other one could be the spam built-in spam checker. More engage offers built-in spam checker of functions. We're able to check if the particular email is gonna be marked as spam into a certain email service providers, right? Or, uh, into the certain web clients. For example, if you see this email which I've created, it's passing with all the different web clients, right? And also it's gonna provide you the feedback around what are the improvements you need to make into that particular email. 
right? So this could be a great handy feature for any marketer in the room. The other option, if I just go back to the editor, how can we control spam? Uh, we spoke about analytics. We spoke about how can we take precaution, preventive actions. The other important aspect in controlling the spam would be target these users or you know ensuring these emails are going to be sent with the relevant messaging, right? So that's what we're going to cover in the fourth aspect. And let me put it in a slideshow. There you go. So last and most important requirement from uh, Yahoo and Google is around brands or marketers should start sending out an email communication which is relevant to the user and which is which is personalized to the all the end users, right? One size fit for all is not going to work anymore, right? It didn't work in the past. It, it's not going to work, and obviously there are going to be much more stringent measures if we if we start doing that. Key. Uh, or maybe as Pankuri and Brad says, pre and pre approach is not going to work. Uh, we just have to personalize uh, personalize every email campaign. We'll have to personalize every communication which goes to the end user, and you know, uh, and just target this user with the relevant message. Now, how can brands do this? Number one, you need to figure out what would the optimal send frequency for the user. The optimal send frequency could be how many emails would and customer or a consumer would like to receive, what time they would like to receive, right? What type of emails they would like to receive or any other communication or any other channel they prefer. Some of the users in the room may prefer push notifications. Some may prefer SMS, some may prefer email. So you need to understand the personal preferences about the user and just personalize the communication based on that aspect. The second would be create a very segmented and targeted campaigns to all the users. So let's deep dive into the more engaged demo and understand how we can create segments and you can leverage advanced segmentation capabilities to create highly targeted emails. All right, so moving on, let me just quickly move the... There you go. So we're coming to, coming to the segmentation part. Any CRM tool out there would be able to create this basic segmentation filters. The filters would be something like, uh, you know, all target users who have executed or maybe opened an email in the last 30 days where the email campaign name or the category is, campaign name is abandoned card, for example, right? and has not executed or has not opened the mobile application or website application. So they have interacted with your email content, but has not you know, opened the website and so on. And there are a lot of variations you can create with the simple filters. But what if you would like to go one step further? Moengish offers an additional features like affinity. Now, what is affinity? It's a psychographic segmentation or affinity segmentation is what we call it. So. Let's look at all the users who open the emails predominantly at a certain day of the week, or maybe let me switch that to a certain hour of the day. So maybe you're launching a new product. You can personalize the email delivery based on the end users. When are they more likely to open the email, right? So user A might like to open an email between say 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning versus user B might love to you know interact with the emails around. Uh, evening hours, maybe five to six p.m. Right, so you can pick up pick up the right frequency, and then you can segment users based on the frequency where they're likely to open those email ads. So that's how you'll be able to you know engage with your user in a timely fashion, and they are more likely to interact with the emails, thus resulting your IP reputation on the higher side. Right, you can also add, uh, you can also create more segmentation features like. RFM segmentation where your where CRM system like Moengage is automatically categorizing your users into different buckets. For example, in this case, I'm providing uh, details around what would be the recent information, the frequent action, and the monetary event. The system will bucket my users into different uh, categories. Like, hey, how many users are about to sleep? How many users need attention? Or who are the champion users? So champion users are likely to interact with your brands. So that's where you can send out the referral campaigns. All the users who needs attention might be the right set of users. You would like to send out, you know, reactivation campaign. You can go ahead and start doing that. 
right? So that's how you'll be able to optimize your st engagement strategy and improve your uh, engagement metrics with more engage. All right. So moving on to the uh, moving on to the last aspect of, of the email creation process, we've seen how you can preview this email across different devices and the clients. The last AI or the last important aspect for the email creation would be to send out an email into the preferred time zone, right? We've saw uh, how can segment users based on the time of the day or hour of the, uh, you know, the day of the week. Moengage also offers you an AI feature which allows you to send this email campaign at a certain best, uh, at a certain time zone, where it could be sent at a fixed time or in a user time zone or it could be sent based on your past user activity. So Brad is you know, more likely to interact with emails around three to 4 p.m. The AI Sherpa would automatically understand Brad's preferences and send out an email around the same time where he likes to interact. So that's a high level summary of how you can keep your messaging relevant, personalized, and you'd be able to get good, good results out of this ERM platform. And coming back to the Francis, what Francis mentioned into the summary of, uh, you know, summary of his uh, call out, marketing, the basics are quite simple. It's all about leveraging the right technology out there, leveraging the right features and how, you know, the basics are still going to be the same. So how you can use, put it all this together into a single place and come up with an optimized engagement strategy. I think with that, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, I would like to open up the forum for us small questions or any questions are out there. I'm happy to help out. Or would you actually Brad? Um, thank you, sir. Thank you for that. That was a nice demo. Okay, um, anyone has any questions for Sid to answer on Mo Engage or how to utilize Mo Engage about, um, you know, overcoming these new guidelines? Uh, Pankuri, I can see some hands uh, raised. Is it? Uh... William asked more questions around the volume on the events which more engage can handle. I guess ingesting the 12 million data daily is not going to be a huge problem for us, William. Uh, we can definitely ingest all this information into the more engage dashboard, consume this information. We integrate with the different sources like SDK, APIs. We've got the open partner integration. You can feed in the data into more engage on a daily basis. And based on that, you can slice and dice and optimize your engagement strategy. Right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, I think that's that's all. We'd be happy to answer more questions. Please reach out to me, Sid, anyone from Mo Engage. We'll be happy to give you another demo or you know answer more questions for you. Uh, all right, we are slightly over time, so thank you everyone for joining in. We'll share a copy of uh, the recording over email with all the attendees. Yep, thank you again for joining. Thank you all the panelists and the audience and Sid. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.